Today's lesson is how to assign the charges to the elements so that when you go to make ionic compounds, you'll be able to assign the proper charges to the cations and the anions. So here we have a picture of the periodic table. You know that this area over here are the most active metals, the alkaline metals. These are the alkaline earth metals. You've got the transition metals right here in the center. Here you have, starting with aluminum, you have the other metal groups. You've got these, tin, lead, those are metals, bismuth, polonium. <coughs> We're going to focus primarily on columns 1 and 2. We're not going to pay any attention to the transition metals at this point. And then we're going to jump over to column 13 and 14. These are your metal atoms. Now starting with column 15, these elements are going to start making anions. So based on their electron configurations, and you know what those are, we'll be able to determine how many electrons each of these non-metals are going to gain so that it becomes isoelectronic with the noble gases, which have completely filled orbitals. So they do not make charges. So we know that all of these group one elements have one valence electron. Metals tend to lose their valence electrons, so these guys are all going to form plus one charges. They'll lose their one valence electron. All of these alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons. When they form a cation, they're going to lose both of their electrons to form a plus two cation. These transition metals right here, they do some weird things. We're not going to pay any attention to them, as I said, but just know in the future, these guys are going to form anywhere from plus one all the way to even potentially a plus seven. And that information will come in another lesson. So again, starting with column 13, these metals here have three valence electrons. They are going to lose their three valence electrons and form a positive three cation. Now carbon, silicon, germanium, these tend not to form cations because they don't form ionic compounds, they form covalent compounds. But tin and lead, these elements do form ionic compounds. And they're very similar to the transition metals. They do some funky things. So they can form a plus two cation or a plus four cation. And we're going to address those when we talk about type, type uh, two um, ionic compounds. Now, these elements right here in column 14 have four valence electrons. Four is halfway to eight, and we know that all elements want to form that octet. They want to be isoelectronic with the noble gases. So starting with column 15, this is where we have five valence electrons. And it's closer for us to go up to the noble gases than it is to lose the electrons to go back. So these elements are going to start forming our anions. Nitrogen and those family members, phosphorus, arsenic, they're going to form a negative three anion. Oxygen is two electrons shy of becoming like neon. All of these elements in this family are two electrons shy of becoming isoelectronic with the noble gases. So they form negative two ions. 
And all of the halogens are only one electron away from becoming like a noble gas. So they form negative one ions. Now I hope this helps you when you're trying to do your ionic compounds worksheet. So now you have a basic understanding of what charges each of these elements is going to form when it starts to form an ionic compound. See you in class.